Now, when we talk about the management of um, anaphylactic shock, we must remember that there is a huge drop in blood pressure. So we have to first stop the procedure and stop the exposure to uh, the allergen. We have to manage the airway and make sure the breathing and circulation are okay. I'll write the dosages here as well, but we must give an adrenaline injection or an epinephrine injection. And this is the dosages here. And this is a intramuscular injection. We must lie the patient in Trendelenburg position, which looks like this. Oxygen therapy is also given alongside giving antihistamines. However, once the clinical symptoms like the urticaria or the rashes on the skin tend to die down and the patient's oxygen and blood pressure is stabilizing, then we can start to give corticosteroids. And this can be used to help decrease the risk of a biphasic anaphylaxis so it can stop it occurring again. We can also give a salbutamol inhaler, which might be effective for the bronchospasm, which is one of the symptoms of anaphylaxis but this is only the case if it hasn't been resolved with the epinephrine because this can usually be resolved with the adrenaline injection and finally just to end the video the most important criteria in cases of anaphylaxis is for the medical professional to be as prepared as possible so this means to have all of the medications and all of the equipment available uh, it's very important in anaphylaxis to work very fast because of the um, very life-threatening condition and how fast it can progress. So um, this is key to be prepared. And the second thing is to have a full medical history of the patient. If you have any suspicions that the patient has an allergy or if they have any other previous allergies, it's uh, very important to get a allergy test specifically to any materials that you'll be using in the procedures and this way it's much safer to proceed and avoid any anaphylactic reactions in practice.